Hi, my name is Dr. Tolo and I'm here to talk to you guys about a medical condition called PCOS. Now, I'm going to be exploring this topic using five different headlines. The first is what is PCOS? The second we'll be looking at is what causes PCOS? The third will be what you would see that will make you suspect whether you have PCOS or not. The fourth has to do with what you need to do to find out if you actually have PCOS. And the fifth, which is probably the one that would interest most people, is how to treat PCOS. Hopefully, you will find this video useful. So guys, stay tuned and watch this video. If you like what I have to say, please hit the subscribe button, um, hit the like button, drop a comment for me and just let me know how useful you found this video. All right, so guys, let's begin. So the first thing we'll be looking at is what is PCOS. Now PCOS is a medical condition and it's a medical condition that is seen in females or maybe in women, right? And what it stands for, PCOS, stands for Polycystic Ovarian Syndrome. Basically, PCOS is a medical condition where we notice that in the woman she produces a lot of androgens. Now androgens are male sex hormones. They help, especially in the process of puberty, and when a boy is developing into a man to help the man to develop the characteristic male features the male head distribution and a couple of other features like that right so women have it but they don't have it in such great amounts like men now when a woman has a high level of androgens or male sex hormones one of the things that it can do in the woman is that it can cause a disruption in a menstrual cycle So that brings me to the second heading which we'll be discussing today and that is what causes PCOS. Now quite frankly, medically speaking, we do not know what causes PCOS, right? Because we have seen a couple of things that we believe can predispose people or increase their chances of having PCOS. But as to a medical cause, the medical cause is still unclear at the moment. One of the things we found out is that PCOS may run in families if the woman's mother had PCOS, then there's a higher chance that she will have PCOS than the chances of a regular person in normal population having PCOS, right? So there's a strong family link. And then another link that we've seen is that many cases of PCOS, there is a, there is what we call insulin resistance. The insulin that they have is not working properly and so the ability to break down or use glucose is also impaired. But we strongly suspect that it is PCOS that leads to this insulin resistance. Guys, that brings me to the third point that we'll be exploring today and that is the symptoms and signs of PCOS. So basically, here are some of the common symptoms of PCOS. The first is irregular or light or missed periods. So you find many women who have PCOS, one of the features that gets them to see their doctor anyways is that they don't see their periods regularly. Women generally see their periods every 28 to 35 days but most fall within 28 days right so basically every month women who have pcos find that many times they may not see their periods for some months so maybe they see their periods in january they may not see it for very much april then they see maybe a light period in may and in june then they may not see their periods again or to say towards the end of the year and that is one of the features that makes the woman to go to see her doctor in the hospital to find out why this is going on. Now, there are a couple of other features that PCOS presents with. Um, weight gain is one of them. And then also many women who have PCOS also notice that they are quite hairy, closely resembles that of a man. It's a condition called um, hirsutism. And it's also one of the features of PCOS. Other features that we see are skin features like acne. It could be one of the symptoms that you can look out for to know if you have PCOS. An important sign that we can also look out for is looking at the ovaries of the women that have PCOS. Many of them, not all, but many of them have what we call fluid field sacs. So when you do an ultrasound scan and you take a look at their ovaries, you see this small things that look like cysts all over the ovaries and they are filled with fluids. So when we see this, then we strongly suspect that this could be 
a woman with PCOS. Now, I would like to say at this point that not every woman who has PCOS has this feature of fluid filled sacs in the ovaries and not every woman who has fluid filled sacs in the ovaries has PCOS. So basically with PCOS, we don't just look out for one symptom and then we say, oh, this person has PCOS. With PCOS, we look out for a couple of symptoms before we can say that it is very likely that this person has polycystic ovarian syndrome. fourth point on my list which is how do you diagnose it now basically pcos is diagnosed by a doctor in the best of settings and what the doctor would do is that you see the doctor the doctor will ask you a couple of questions to get your clinical history and these questions would probably revolve around your periods how regular your periods are these questions will also revolve around maybe weight um, your weight and some other things that we look out for the doctor would also take time to examine you and when examining you look out for a couple of the symptoms and signs that i've mentioned weight gain a um, male pattern distribution of hair some women even notice that they may have a um, male pattern balding right and the doctor when examining you looks out for all of this then the doctor may ask you to do a couple of tests some of the important tests to look out for will be blood tests so what these blood tests will check is to check your hormones and one of the things we'll check in the blood test is to check your androgen level so when we do blood tests and then we see that your androgen levels are higher than they should be then we start to suspect that hey this might just be pcos and then we look out for other hormones as well another important test that the doctor will do is an ultrasound the test we do where we are able to visualize the woman's reproductive organs and then we're able to take a look at the ovaries remember what i said about many women with PCOS having fluid filled sacs or follicles in their ovaries. So this is one of the things that we look out for in an ultrasound scan. So when we see a couple of these symptoms and signs in just one person, then that helps us to give a diagnosis of PCOS. And that brings me to the fifth point on my list, and that is how do we treat PCOS. Now the treatment for PCOS varies from woman to woman, and some of the factors that we consider are how old is the woman the woman's age and then we also consider the woman's future plans do you plan to ha get pregnant soon or do you is pregnancy not maybe in your short-term plans so the treatment we use depends on some of these factors when we look at a woman who plans to get pregnant some of the things we do when treating her is that we encourage her to make some lifestyle changes so if the woman we see with pcos is on the big side maybe she's overweight or she's obese then we encourage her to make some lifestyle changes changes to her diet we encourage her to do things that can help her to lose weight in previous videos i've done i've discussed and explained exactly what you need to do if you want to lose weight in a healthy fashion so you can always go back and watch those videos one of the things that we do with women who have PCOS and want to get pregnant in the nearest future. So we place them on medication that helps them to ovulate and to ovulate on a regular basis. So that will increase their chances of getting pregnant. Now, we have looked at the women who plan to get pregnant soon. And I would want us to now discuss women who do not have pregnancy in their short-term plans, who are, who, you know, pregnancy is not the, on the horizon or for them. We encourage them also to make diet and lifestyle changes, like I explained previously. But other things we do is that we can place them on birth control pills. Now, the purpose of these birth control pills is to help them to see their periods, more or less to help them to see their periods regularly. Because like I've said, PCOS is a condition that can affect the regularity of a woman's menstrual cycle and then we can also place them on some medications to help them to treat the other symptoms of PCOS and then sometimes as well we place them on medication that we usually give to diabetics it can help with this particular symptom PCOS unfortunately does not have a medical cure but what we try to do with PCOS is that we try to treat the symptoms that we see and then we also try to treat based on the woman's age and based on the woman's plans whether she plans to get pregnant soon or whether she has she does not plan to get pregnant soon that can influence the plans as well and i want to end this video by saying this there's a common myth out there that if you have if a woman has pcos then she is going to be unable to get pregnant i would like to say at this point that most women with pcos who receive the right treatment are able to get pregnant 
most women so that saying or that myth is false and i don't want you to believe it because many people get worried when they get the diagnosis of pcos but pcos even though it doesn't have a medical cure it can be treated medically and most women who receive treatment for pcos are able to get pregnant all right guys to help me to know that you stay to the end i would like you to drop in the comments Thank you, Dr. Tolu. So that will help me to know that you got to the end. Thank you guys for watching. If you loved what I had to say, please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, drop a comment for me. Thank you, Dr. Tolu. And also share this video with those who you know may have a diagnosis of PCOS or those who worry that they have PCOS, who believe maybe because they have PCOS, they will not be able to get pregnant. Share this video with them and help them to have the correct information regarding polycystic ovarian syndrome. Thank you guys for watching. Bye.